Ladies and gentlemen, the 38th Commandant of the Marine Corps, General Dave Berger. Commandant, thank you. This is a great morning this morning. Uh, I didn't tell General Faulkner this, but yesterday afternoon, uh, probably like you all, uh, I periodically contact uh, mentors of mine for advice, probably the same. Yesterday afternoon, it was General Dunford. So I said, uh, hey, uh, you went through a similar time uh, four years ago. So, you know, I'm looking for advice on from now till the election, the election, how do you shepherd keep the organization on a kind of even keel through all that turbulence. And uh, he just laughed a while and just said, you know, basically that, uh, and I'm thinking of the video here, Marines will do fine. And the, 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 everything else will settle itself out. But he said, what you should do is uh, what Marines always do, and that's plan. Best advice he could have given me, just think. In other words, be prepared, don't be surprised. And then yesterday morning, before I, I, I speak, just yesterday morning, there's one other tie to the video and to, to the president's comments a couple minutes ago. So our major and I had the privilege, like many of you all have, of going to the cornerstone course, the commander's course, where all the lieutenant colonels and colonels and sergeant majors all come to Quantico for two weeks and figure out how, what it is to be a commander. And General Craparada, probably General Bohm, are you speaking there this week as well? Yeah, it's just, you walk into the, even it doesn't matter, pandemic, you just walk into that room and, and there's 140, give or take, lieutenant colonels and colonels and sergeant majors and they are just, this is like they're the, the pinnacle for them, command or, or being a unit sergeant major, this is what they've waited their whole career for. And, if, and uh, it is really pretty energizing. So you talk for about five or ten minutes, and then they start firing their questions at you, and then that goes for 50 more minutes or 60 more minutes, and they're not easy elementary questions. All that to say, I think there's a reason for that. They're not elementary basic level questions because, in part, this organization is raising the dialogue, raising the discussion, raising the debate. I'm, I'm going to have some comments, but I'm thanking you way up front. Because their questions to Sergeant Major and me yesterday, and did you talk yesterday or today? Today? I mean, they're not easy questions. They're really, really hard. And it, it does reflect, I think, the dialogue that the Marines are having. This organization, long way of saying, is sort of a, I don't know, the, the tinder underneath there that keeps, it, keeps that dialogue going and fires it up. Otherwise, I think it would be a pretty basic level conversation, and it's not. So first of all, thank you just for allowing Sergeant Major and me, uh, General Craparada, General Bohm, just to be in the room with the foundation this morning. It is a, we're very grateful just for you all to be allowing us to be in the room, but we believe we belong here as well. We're not, we're not strangers. This is a huge day. Uh, the National Military Association, which has been a, maybe a two-year discussion or a year, and I don't know when it began, but at least a year and a half discussion. I didn't know, I'll be honest, I didn't know what a National Military Association was or was not. I, I just didn't, never thought of it. This is, is a huge, this and May, those two events will, will, will uh, meet the requirements so that uh, now joining Dennis Tobin's organization, we can have two national military organizations in the Marine Corps, because right now, today, uh, the Marine Corps League is our only one. This is a busy week. You all already know that. I mean, a busy week for you all. You have the, the board meeting this morning. You have uh, Modern Day Marine. We have a ground awards dinner. This time of year, it's almost like, uh, it's almost like the Marine Corps birthday ball season. It's just a jam-packed week. But the fun part is, you walk in here, I don't know about you all, but you walk in here and you see people you haven't seen for maybe two or three months or six months, and it's really fantastic, because you, especially this summer, you don't bump into people very often. And you see everybody on the way in here is like Bob Love and guys I have served with in 2nd Recon Battalion and other units. is really a fun morning, so thank you for having us. 
I think the commitment to Marine, uh, pretty straightforward in the video, I believe the way you articulated it, sir, is dead on accurate. This is not just an organization over to the side in the bleachers, you know, call us when you need us. I think this is woven into the fabric of the Marine Corps. And the, the topic I'm gonna to speak of for just about five or, five or seven minutes this morning is directly tied to this organization. Um, Major General Bill Mullen, who retired this summer, uh, started talking to me about a year and a half, two years ago about learning in the Marine Corps. And other than perhaps General Van Riper, and there may be one or two others, you all will probably remind me, no one else I know thinks about learning in the same way that Bill Mullen thinks about learning. And after some discussion, he said, uh, I think we should write a doctrinal publication on it. When he says we, what Bill Mullen means is like me, because Bill can write. And Bill is, is always reading on any given day five, six, seven books at the same time. MCDP7, uh, the product of what, you know, the 5,000 years of accumulated experience like General Van Riper and others mentioned, this is what Bill Mullen gave back to the Marine Corps before he retired this summer. And that's what I'm going to talk to you about is learning and the tie to this organization, which I think is, is essential. In, in, in basic form, uh, most of you probably have not read that doctrinal publication, but Bill lays out that learning is training plus education. And then he further breaks it down to training. Training is what you do for the things that are known. The reps and sets, this is going for repetition rep so that you can, when you're operating tactically, you can, in your mind, say, I've seen something pretty good. And, and, and you're uh, comfortable making decisions. That's training. This organization, on the other hand, supports the other half, the education. And the education, in Bill Mullen's description, education helps us prepare for the unknowns. And this is why Bill's reading five, six, seven books a day all the time. Now, he doesn't finish them all in a day, but he's got multiple ones going all the time. Because in his mind, we educate for the unknown. And if you read enough, and there's 5,000 years of recorded history, we should be pretty prepared for the unknown. And that's where I think this organization fits in. Because if you read that book and you understand Bill's premise, then you go, okay, now I know what I gotta do. I gotta educate myself. And then he goes further and says, self-education is a professional responsibility. Again, I think this organization, a lot of the pictures up there are of groups, units, but Bill and this organization drives home the point that it's an individual responsibility. Every single Marine on your own has to educate yourself. And I think this organization provides the, the tools to do that. Because it's one thing for a lieutenant or a lance corporal to say, all right, I, I got it. I should educate myself. I, I don't know where to begin. This organization is like a, is a foundation underneath there. And it doesn't matter whether you're a lieutenant or a lieutenant general. This, this organization f supports every, every single level which is pretty fantastic. We believe uh, General Craparata, General Smith, the senior leaders in the Marine Corps, Sergeant Major, the direction we're going in the military for the Marine Corps and the Navy is that we have to be able to operate very distributed, very spread out. That means small unit leaders, junior leaders making big decisions. That means the same kind of pattern that most of you all saw. What, what battalion commanders had to decide years ago, now company commanders have to decide, and company commanders on down. So you extract that long way of saying, we, you and I, our job is to arm sergeants, arm lieutenants with the tools to make decisions that may be two levels higher 20 years before, because they will have the technical capabilities in their hands that we didn't have. Now all they need is, is this up here. So they'll have technical responsibilities, they'll have tactical responsibilities that in my, my view, my estimation, 
in a span of 20 years probably dropped at least one level, maybe two. We have to, we have to arm them for that. This week, I think that the, the modern day Marine is part of that. This is the interface between industry and the service. We know where we think we're going. Industry says this is impossible. And the whole week is about trying to get to a marriage between the two. And the closer we can pull Marines into that, individual Marines into that conversation, that's, that's the direction we got to go. Because General Smith or General Pasagian at Marine Corps Systems Command and all his program managers, every day they work with industry. But there's layers between them and a platoon commander or a platoon sergeant. So in the strength of something like modern day Marine is it draws closer to the platoon commander, the company commander, brings them closer to an engineer to say, What's, uh, this is my challenge. I gotta figure out how to operate like this. And the engineer can say, you know, we're working on something kind of sort of similar to that. Modern day Marines really are venue to do that. Uh, I mentioned I, the training and education in Bill's mind, I agree, are two different things. Training alone, not sufficient. We have to educate. The next step in this just discussion is, uh, and I'm going to ask you to buy into a concept that General Mullen and I talk about before he wrote the book called, he terms it the intellectual edge. And most of you and I have heard about a technological edge or a capability edge. This is military to military. How do we stack up, in other words, against our competitors, against our adversaries? One of us has an edge maybe in certain technological areas. Others, your adversary might have an edge. In Bill's mind, all of that capability edge is not enough. You need an intellectual edge, as he calls it, an intellectual edge. This is how Marines recognize cues recognize things they see, recognize patterns, able to fuse it in their brain and make a decision. And if all that sounds sort of like Colonel Boyd's OODA loop, it is. Bill's term though, intellectual edge, I think is, the more I think about it, the more he described it for me, the more it sinks in. We need an edge, we're going to need an edge. And we have a warrior spirit and we have technical capabilities, but Bill's addition of an intellectual edge, I think, is powerful. How do, we, how do we arm junior leaders with the knowledge to be able to recognize things early on, process it pretty quickly, and make a decision and assess? How do we do that? How do we sharpen, basically, this intellectual edge? Because if, the, if I do, that a peer threat is going to try to close the technological gap or, or move past you, try to move past you. In other words, have the same or equal capabilities. We don't have advantage. We need to rely pretty heavily also then on the technological edge. So how do we sharpen it? This is where learning comes in. And Bill and, and me and the rest of the leaders, the rest of the senior staff and CEOs, again, think it's an institutional responsibility and an individual responsibility, learning. We have to put it back in the center. And here again, I think this organization, sir, your organization for 100 years has done that. In the course of my career, things like the reading program, the libraries that this organization provides to individual units, all the stuff that was in the video, which I hadn't seen before, all of them were in my notes as, this is how we provide learning. They have to absorb it, but this organization kind of writes the check, puts the pieces in place for that to happen. Really powerful. We're going to need it, is what I'm telling you. I believe we're going to rely more and more on the intellectual edge. We have to, long and short of it, develop a pattern of continuous learning. And I think the association and foundation are powerful tools for that. Some people probably say that the written document is gone by the way of the dinosaur. I think the Gazette and the Leatherneck are still extremely influential periodicals and we, we have to read them. We need to read them. That is our vehicle for debate in many cases. 
in a, in a larger s span. And now it's digital. There's no limits to who can, who can access it. Long way of saying, uh, for you in the association and foundation, your board members, I'm just telling you, for, for, from Marines, genuinely, thank you. We will need to sharpen our intellectual edge. Lastly, the importance of a national military association. I don't think we know it yet, frankly. I don't think we're going to know for the next couple of years, really, what the power of having the Marine Corps League and the Marine Corps Association Foundation, two national military associations, I don't think we're going to really know the potential of that for a couple of years. But I'm pretty, pretty excited to see it. The Secretary of Defense is the one who has to designate it, as I understand it, correct? And you have to meet certain prerequisites, one of which is this morning's meeting and, and breakfast. We're going to have, Sergeant Major and I are going to have two partner organizations that we can lean heavily on. Really powerful. This morning's event, back to where I began, uh, to me, to the Sergeant Major, really I don't know, you know, in the recorded history of the Marine Corps which things make the script, but this is a pretty big one. I think if General Lejeune was sitting here having coffee, it'd be like, it's about time, you know, like, what took you to your point? Really, 107 years? What took you so long? He'd be pretty happy, I believe. He'd be happy at the intellectual edge that Marines are driving towards. He'd be happy at what you're doing to support them. As your commandant who serves you and the Sergeant Major, on behalf of both of us, thanks, thanks for making that possible. We're going to lean more and more and more on you. We're really excited about this morning. Thanks for having me for breakfast. Thanks.